Hello and welcome to a UX Pin tutorial. This video will focus on expressions and their usefulness in creating even more advanced prototypes than before. But first, let's go over what expressions are. They are JavaScript based functions that can be used in UX Pin to do the following validate data provided by the users, manipulate variables, perform math and logic operations, and use the results to take further actions in the prototype. To present how expressions work, I'll use the same prototype from the previous training videos for states, variables, and conditional interactions. According to the standards for the credit card layout, the cardholder's full name has to be in uppercase letters on its front side. Here, the user enters their name with a mix of upper and lowercase letters. So we'll somehow need to modify it to become all uppercase letters once the second page is open. Notice how the full name of Katie Simpson is not only transferred between the pages, but also modified to all uppercase letters on the card. This was possible because I added an interaction of set content with an expression as a content of the element. Looks cool, right? Now let's break down this case and enter UXPIN's editor. First, I'm adding a new variable. I'm going to call it name. It will contain all the details provided in the full name area. Next, I'm creating a set variable interaction for the that's me button. It will define the value of the name variable as a content of the full name input. I'm leaving click as a trigger, choosing the destination variable as name, and setting the variable value as content of full name input. If you'd like to learn more about variables, check out the tutorial where I present how they work in UX Pin. Now let's focus on the second page. Here, I'm creating a canvas interaction of set content. It will use the value of the previously set variable and apply it on the selected component. I'm setting the trigger as page is loaded because I want the interaction to happen as a result of opening the page. And I'm selecting set content as the action. The destination element that will be modified is the full name front, which is visible on the card's front side. If in the section of sent content as, I will select value of variable. The applied text will be formatted the same way as it was entered on the first page. See? Now, because I want to modify the style of the text on the second page, I will need to select the expression option instead. After I select expressions in the interaction properties, a list with all the available variables and supported functions will show. There are many expressions that can affect the text styling such as lowercase or capitalize, but for this case, I will pick uppercase. To select the expression, you can scroll through the whole list or simply type in the expression field. Most of the functions require a specific type of argument in the brackets. In this case, I will just need to add a string which is referring to the name variable. To include it, I'm starting the string with a dollar sign. And just like when you're choosing the expression, you can write the whole variable name here or you can select from the list. Once I provide a valid expression format, the save button will be enabled and the interaction is now ready to be saved. Awesome! Now let's have a look in the preview mode to see the results. Just like before, I'm entering the name of Katie Simpson on the first page. And when I move to step two, the full name is transferred with the set content interaction. The uppercase expression modifies it so all the characters are uppercase on the credit card to meet the layout standards. And there you have it. This is how expressions work in UX Pin. To recap, expressions are especially helpful for validating data, manipulating variables, setting content of the elements, creating logic-based operations, and performing math. Expressions can contain actual values such as numbers 5, 10, 15. They can contain text strings, variables, content of elements, true or false value, and any of the supported functions such as length. Well, thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next tutorial.